going to talk about arrogance. This is one of the six primary unwholesome mental factors. We will delve deep into different kinds of arrogance. There are seven kinds of arrogance and three out of the seven have nine subgroups. We will talk about them in detail. First, let's talk about the seven arrogance. The first one is the general arrogance. There are two types. One is someone is inferior to us in some qualities such as intelligence, wealth, status, or appearance. We might look down on others who we think are inferior to us. The second type is we think others are equal to us, so they are not better than we are. Therefore, we don't need to respect them or learn from them. That's the general arrogance. The second type is called the exaggerated arrogance. This is worse than the general arrogance. There are also two types. One, someone is better than we are, but we treat them as equal. Number two is they are equal to us, but we think we are better. Both of these are exaggerated arrogance. Number three is outrageous arrogance. It's even worse than exaggerated arrogance when others are much better than we are, but we think we are much better than they are. So we are kind of very confused. So this is called outrageous arrogance. The first three are different levels of arrogance. The fourth one is called egotistical arrogance. This is when we are full of the self and things that are belonging to me, they are always better. For example, my son is doing better than yours. My husband is a doctor, is a lawyer, doing much better than you are, or my car, my house. We have the possessive nature, thinking anything that belongs to us is much better because of the strong self. Buddha teaches us to get rid of the self. We call it non-self. The five aggregate, our body, our feelings, our perception, our mental formation, and our consciousness, body and mind, none of it is me or mine. It's only a delusion, thinking these things belong to me and it's in my possession and they are better than others. The concept of the self, we call it a strong ignorance. So the key to let go of our sense of self is to contemplate on condition arising. Everything you see in your life is only condition arising. Because of your karma stored in your liar consciousness, you have the cause, the condition, the results. That is all. In this condition arising, the nature is emptiness. None of it is real. It's only condition arising. In the condition, the intrinsic nature is emptiness. So nothing belongs to you. It's only condition. We need to contemplate on this. That's what we call insight meditation or non-self contemplation. Five, exceeding arrogance. This is for cultivators who are conceited, thinking they have achieved levels that they have not achieved. Because we have concentration or we have deep meditation skills, we think we are already enlightened. But concentration doesn't mean enlightenment. Some people might think, oh, I'm already an arhat. In fact, they have not attained the level. Six, modest arrogance. This is when people appear as if they are very humble. In front of you, they might say, oh, you're so much better, oh, you're so great. But deep down inside, they just think you're better, so what? You just have better luck or you have more time to study. If I study, I can be as good as you are. So they know you're better and they might appear humble, but inside is full of arrogance. So it's very subtle and hard to detect. Seven is distorted arrogance. It's when you do bad deeds, you think it's good. You're proud of yourself. Like, oh, I can drink a lot of alcohol or I'm cheating but nobody knows. That is called distorted or evil arrogance. You are proud of your bad deeds. So these are the seven general types of arrogance. Out of these seven, three are very common. 
general arrogance, exaggerated arrogance, and modest arrogance. These three are most common. Out of these three, we have nine subgroups. Out of the general arrogance, we can have these three. One is, I am equal to others. Since we are equal, I don't need to respect them. Or you might think, my colleagues, we pretty much have the same skills, but how come they have higher salary than me? And you don't think it's fair because you have a sense of arrogance. Number two is others are equal to me. This is from the point of view of I. This is from the point of view of the others. They are equal to me. Since we're equal, I do not need to respect them. I don't need to learn from them. They have nothing for me to learn. We are the same. Even out of equality, you are arrogant. Three, there is no one superior to me. Because of this perceived equality, we don't think anybody is higher than us. Nobody you should learn from because you are already very good. We are all equal. We are pretty much the same. That is our general arrogance out of the perceived equality. Number two, exaggerated arrogance. There are also three types. One from the point of view of I, one is the others, and one is everyone. So, I am superior to others. Now we think we are superior, uh, not just equal, we think we are superior. This can be someone that's very obvious, like I'm the president, I'm the CEO of the company. Of course you think you are superior than the janitor or any of the lower employees. Usually, it's because of our status, our wealth, or we're very intelligent. Out of all these things, we think we are much more superior than others. Number five is others are inferior to me. So it's saying the same thing, but I'm superior, they are inferior. They are below me. I am higher. That's when you would think you have the authority to order people around. There's a Buddha's disciple, his name is Pelantavasa. He was a, a chief arhat, so he has supernatural ability. One time he wanted to cross a river, so he ordered the river god. Little slave, stop the current, I need to cross the stream. The river god was very upset. How can you call me a little slave? This Arhat did it many times, not just this one time. Finally, the river god, she was very upset. She went to Buddha and complained. Buddha, your disciple, he belittled me. He called me little slave. Buddha ordered this Arhat, you apologize to her. Pelantavasa said, hey, little slave, I'm sorry. So even when he apologized to her, he is being arrogant. Why? Buddha says, for 500 lifetimes, you were his servant. That's why he's used to it. He is an arhat. He doesn't have the affliction. It's not that he wants to belittle you. It's just his residual habits. We cannot blame him. So we have very deep arrogance that we haven't detected. So we need to really contemplate and to know our arrogance. Six, there's no one equal to me. It's saying the same thing. I am superior, others are inferior. There's no one equal to me. They are all exaggerated arrogance because we think we're much higher than others. No one can be equal to us because we are superior. That's why we cannot respect anyone. Now let's look at modest arrogance. We pretend to be humble, but deep down inside we're not. There are also three kinds. I am inferior to others. I admit I am not as good as they are, but only by a little bit because I'm not that bad. They think they're inferior only by a little, but in fact it's a lot. Number eight, Others are superior to me. I admit they are superior to me, but only slightly, just a little bit. Just because I didn't have the chance, I didn't have the time. That's why I cannot be as good as they are. But if I do, I can be just as good. So deep down inside, it's still full of arrogance. 
and number nine, there is no one inferior to me. I admit they are much better than I am. I'm no good, but so what? I don't care. So this is the type of person, they don't care. They admit they are not good, but they don't give a care. They just let it all go. But that is still arrogance. So our arrogance, they are all these different types. This all comes from number four. It's the basis of all these arrogance because there is a self. If we don't have a self, then we will not compare with others. It's all because of comparison that we have this kind of thinking, this kind of affliction. If there's not a me, what are we comparing to? So we need to replace this arrogance with love, unconditional love for all sentient beings. We are not better than anyone. No one is less than us. We are just different conditions. What we appear right now is only because of our karma. But in this condition, everyone is emptiness. Everyone is a Buddha. Everyone has the Buddha nature. And we are all one, one Buddha nature. So love all equally. Do not look down on anyone. Do not be conceited and disrespect anybody. We need to respect everyone equally. This is true equality. Buddha is teaching us the truth. We should let go of all our judgment, all our competition. Do not elevate ourselves to be higher than others because in reality, we are really equal. So if you can bring yourself to the state of non-conditional love, that is when our true nature comes out. So look into our arrogance and let it go and let go of the self. That's how we experience the state of non-self. Then that's enlightenment. So that's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.